Hi, I'm Paul with Catamount Cycles. Today I'm going to show you how to pull a Honda CRF carburetor. We have an O2 CRF 450R. This will work for the 250s, the 450s, the R's, and the X's. The first thing we need to do is determine whether or not we need to pull this carb. It's a difficult carb to pull, so Honda has put a port on the bottom so you can change the main jet and the idle jet, and a port on the top so you can change the needle or the needle position. If you need to change one of those, it's easier to not pull the carb. Just loosen the clamps on the top and bottom and push the carb to either side to get access to those ports. In this case, we have a leaky carburetor, so the float needle needs to be replaced and the carb needs to be pulled. You'll notice I have this bike on an adjustable stand. We're going to remove the rear shock in order to remove this carburetor, and having an adjustable stand helps. If you don't have an adjustable stand, put the bike on the highest stationary stand you have, and then you'll be able to move the rear tire up and down to remove the lower linkage. Now we're going to remove the seat and the tank. The seat is removed with two 10 millimeter bolts. Pull the rear of the seat up and back, and it will come off. Now we're going to move to the gas tank. First, we'll remove the petcock. This petcock is attached to the frame, not to the tank. First, we'll remove the fuel line. And next, we'll remove the petcock with an 8 millimeter bolt. The tank can be removed with the shrouds in place by removing the shroud bolts. There are two shroud bolts on the bottom, one on the back, one on the front. The stock tank has an additional 8 millimeter head up front. This is an oversized tank which covers that bolt, so this particular tank has two 8 millimeter bolts which we need to undo. We also have a rubber hold down on the rear of the tank. Now we're ready to remove the tank. Remember that petcock. Um, we're going to have to move it around the frame rails. And there are two hoses attached from the petcock to the tank. Next, we're going to loosen the rear subframe and remove the rear shock. There's a bolt at the top. We're going to leave this bolt in for now so we can pivot the rear up and down. And there are two bolts at the bottom. And on this particular model, the kickstand spring is held by this one, so it might pop out on you. There's a mounting bolt on the rear of the muffler. Sometimes there is a second one on the front, and there is a band clamp going to the header. Now our rear subframe should be free to move around. This is the CRF 450R. A dual sport kit has been added to it, so we have a few extra wires running through here. The CRF 
uh, 250 and 450X will have multiple wires on both sides of the rear subframe, making it more difficult to move this rear subframe. We have two band clamps holding the carburetor in. One's on the front, typically it's positioned on the top. The other one's on the back, typically positioned on the bottom. You will want to make these very loose. Now that the muffler, the subframe bolts, and the rear band clamp are loose, we should be able to move around this rear subframe a, a little. This boot's being particularly difficult to remove. I have a couple of tools here. One is a 90 degree dental pick and the other is a very small pry bar. Um, I'm using these to try to get the boot free from the carburetor. Uh, the dental pick is used by inserting the end between the boot and the carburetor body itself and pulling it away to try to break the bond between the boot and the carburetor. And the pry bar is used to try to pry the boot away from the carburetor. There is, it's difficult to see, but there is a large rubber tab on the bottom of the boot that Honda has put there to help remove and reinstall the boot. And you can grab that and pull it. And I think we are finally moving. Now that the boot is starting to move, going to pull the entire rear subframe back and try to pop that boot off. And there it goes. Now on the X models, we'll have tight cables on both the left and the right sides. Um, so your movement will be a lot more limited. We don't really need a whole lot of movement on here. You can use a bungee cord to hold the rear subframe up and away from your work. When you're moving the rear subframe around, a lot of times the rear mudguard will get stuck on the wheel and make it difficult, so keep an eye on where that mudguard is. Next we're removing the rear shock absorber. There's a bolt on the top and on the bottom. You'll remove the nut first on each side with a 17 millimeter socket. If you have lowered your CRF with a uh, different lower link, um, you will need to either raise or lower the rear wheel at this point to get access to this bolt. With the stock link, the rear tire needs to be all the way down. You'll need to take the pressure off of the shock absorber in order to remove the bolts. I'll do that by pulling up on the rear wheel and pulling out the bolt. Now the bottom is free. We'll remove the, move the rear subframe out of the way. Now the top bolt is free. and our shock absorber is out. There are little bushings in the lower port part. Frequently they'll just fall out, so it's a good idea to pull them out so you don't lose them. So one on each side. Now that we have the rear subframe removed, we want to concentrate on the cables. The cables are very difficult to access while the carburetor is in place. We need to pop the carburetor loose and move it back so we can access the cables from the rear subframe area. This model does not have a hot start on the handlebars, but uh, some models do. If you have a hot start up here, you'll want to remove the bolt that holds the lever on, pull the lever out, and disconnect the cable. Then your hot start cable will be free. 
Last thing we need to worry about is the throttle position sensor connection. Um, this connection is black. On a lot of them they are white. You'll push down on the tab. Sometimes it helps to use a screwdriver and you'll wiggle the connection free. If you need additional slack on the throttle cables, you can move the handlebars all the way to the right. If you still need more slack, you may need to remove the throttle tube entirely. If you have hand guards, that will need to be removed first. And then the throttle tube is removed with two 8 millimeter bolts. I've got a 14 millimeter bolt holding an engine bracket on which holds a protector for the fuel line. I'm going to have to remove the entire engine mount bolt to get this out. Now we're ready to loosen the front hose clamp and pull the carburetor back. We're going to pull the carburetor straight back into the space where the shock was. There are a number of vent lines coming off the carburetor that route through a couple of different holders on the bottom. They need to be pulled free so you can move the carburetor. We have a four millimeter Allen bolt holding a plastic cover over the throttle cables. In addition to that Allen bolt, we need to loosen the cables with a 10 millimeter wrench before we can pop this cover off. Loosen both the top and bottom cables. Pull the plastic cover off from the rear. Now that we have the plastic cover off, we can access the cables. Since they're loose, they pop out. To get enough room to remove the carburetor, we need to release the hot start cable. Some bikes have it up above the clutch lever. This one has it on the right hand side. This one happens to use a four millimeter Allen bolt to remove it. Um, I believe the stock one uses an eight millimeter hex. So we'll loosen the bolt that holds the lever. and we'll pull the cable out. Pull the lever off, remove the cable. The hot start cable goes in right above the choke lever. It can be loosened with a 14 millimeter wrench. It is very tight to get in here. This whole assembly is made out of plastic. So be careful not to strip the threads out. Once it's loose, there is some knurling in there so you can get your fingers on it and undo it by hand. The end of the hot start lever contains a plunger and a spring. If you pull the spring back, you can release the plunger so you won't lose these parts. Now we're ready to pull the carburetor out. And there you have one CRF carburetor removed. All right, we have our carburetor fixed and ready to go back in. It's pretty much the reverse process with a few tips to help you get it on straight. 
First we'll put the carburetor back in where the shock went. Pull the hot start cable out as far as you can and install it first. On the throttle cables, you want to make sure you get your push cable and pull cable correctly. The best way to do that is to pull the throttle to see which way the wires go. And now we know which one is our pull cable. We can mount that one in first. And then our push cable. Next we'll retighten the throttle tube and then check the throttle cable tension on the carburetor. We want to check the throttle cable tension before we put this back together. You can see there's just a little bit of slack there. So we're good. Next we'll reinstall the plastic cover. and then tighten our throttle cable bolts. Now that we've got our throttle cables attached, we want to reattach the throttle position sensor. We're going to go ahead and put it back in the intake boot. Be sure both of your band clamps are attached. And push it into position. The boot has uh, two nubs to align this uh, align the carburetor into. So be sure those are aligned properly and push the carburetor into place. And tighten down the upper band clamp. Next we're going to put the rear shock absorber back in place and we're going to attach it at the bottom only. Don't forget to reinsert your bushings in the bottom joint. When we reinsert the carburetor, it's very important to get this rubber boot aligned back on the carb. I use a 90 degree dental tool to help with this. When we put it together, 
There will be pressure from the boot going to the carburetor, and then I use the tool to go between the boot and the carburetor to pull it all the way around on both sides to ensure it's well seated. You can raise and lower the rear subframe to put pressure on the rubber boot as it goes into the carburetor. If you have an assistant, it helps to have them raise and lower it for you while you try to align the carburetor boot, but it can be done by yourself as well. Be sure to inspect the rubber boot all the way around very closely with the flashlight to ensure that it's fully seated before tightening the band clamp. Now that the carburetor's in place, we can reattach our upper shock mount. And we need to remember to tighten up the bottom mount as well. Now we can bolt our rear subframe back in place. And if you remove the kickstand spring bracket, don't forget to replace it. The muffler will go on next. Next we'll install the gas tank. Be sure to run your petcock down into its place. For reinstalling the seat, there are a set of brackets that go in a set of clips on the seat. So you'll need to push the seat down hard to make sure those align. In addition, there's another bracket on the tank that also um, aligns into an area on the seat. So be sure those are all aligned as you slide it forward and you'll know if they're aligned, you will not be able to pull up on the front of the seat or on the middle of the seat. And obviously those in the back are not aligned. Now they are.
And there we have one reassembled Honda CRF. Thank you for watching, hope this helps.